is Campagnolo set to launch a brand new wide group set and ditch its famous thumb shifters by copying Shimano and SRAM this year? Are auto inflating tyres the tech we want or just a gimmick? Is jet washing a bike ever okay? And an update on my £400 Candale CAD 12 project. So I'm David, you're watching Just Ride Bikes. Let's dive in to this week's tech news. So it's been four years since Super Record EPS was announced, so the timing for a new group set is about right. And arguably, Campag needs to do something big to save its place in the market. Cycling websites have been reporting on news that Campag could be set to launch a brand new wide group set this year, and also ditching its very unique thumb shifters as well. I'm not sure which is more shocking. The news come from patents filed in the US that show drawings of a SRAM style group set. So each derailleur appears to have a small removable battery, just like SRAM's ETAP brought to the world a few years ago. I would have thought SRAM would have patents for its design really locked down tight, but maybe not. But what's even more shocking is that there are photos of a new group set that appears to show Campag might be ditching its famous Ergo Power thumb shifter design. This is definitely a Marmite part of the group set. If you're a Campag fan, you love it, but if you come from Shimano, it can definitely take some getting used to. And it appears that with this new group set, Campag has been prompted to emulate or copy Shimano with two small buttons behind the brake lever. So what do we all make of it then? I personally really think it's the last ditch effort by the Italian company to remain relevant in the road bike market. Its market share and appeal has definitely faded away over the last few years, although Eckhart has given it a boost in the gravel bike market. But in the road cycling scene, both Shimano and SRAM are racing away with market share and the appeal and a wide range of price points. So it seems Campag has admitted that they need to emulate some of their core features and ditch a thumb shifter and ditch a wise if it hopes to be that third choice in the group set market. Because at the moment, it's a very distant third choice. But I'm not really sure if copying their brands is the right way because they also risk losing what makes the Italian company unique. Wireless certainly seems to be the way to go. While on the road, wireless may make no tangible difference to how the group set works and operates, although building it is definitely easier. It's clear from SRAM's success over the last few years that lots of cyclists connect wireless with being ultra modern and the future of a group set. And a disappointment from many with Shimano's semi-wireless group set with the 12-speed setup launched last year as fair weight to this argument, in my opinion. As far as I know, the new group set hasn't been spotted in a while just yet. I had a closer look at the Agi 2R team bikes at the Tour of Flanders last weekend and didn't spot anything. It might be hiding in the team truck, but I couldn't see anything visible. Compare that to SRAM, who had people and teams on its ETAP a full year before launch, and Shimano usually had riders on a new group set at smaller races leading up to the Tour of France several months before launch. If the group set is real then, and I do hope it is, I'd hazard a guess at a Giro launch. That race is in May, so next month, which seems an obvious choice for the Italian company. And we might see it on bikes at smaller races later this month. So definitely one to uh, watch out for. And let me know what you think of Campag's bold attempt to stay relevant in a Shimano and SRAM dominated market by leaving a comment down below. The Jumbo Visma team haven't just been winning all the races in the Spring Classic so far, but also testing a brand new adjustable tyre pressure system as well. It's called the Kinetic Air Pressure System, with a special hub connected to the tyres and a handbar remote that lets the rider adjust the pressure of the tyres on the move. The pump is apparently powered by the spinning wheel motion. And some of the riders on the team have been using this new technology in some of the spring classics over the last few weeks. We often see interesting tyre-based technology in these races, which do feature lots of cobbles and parve. Riders are now running wider tyres and lower pressures than ever before. 28 at Flanders and 32 at Roubaix, often tubeless and often with air liners as well. But tyre pressure is still a closely guarded secret and a compromise. In both Flanders and Roubaix, there's actually more road than cobbles, although the cobbles dominate the race and the action. But you want higher pressures for the former and lower pressures for the latter. 
This system, in theory, could let you have the best of both worlds. High pressures on the road and low pressures on the cobbles and not have to make that compromise that they do currently. Personally, I love seeing crazy tech innovations like this. It's exciting and fascinating. And in theory, the idea of being able to drop your tire pressure when you encounter a rough road, a cobble section or gravel for extra comfort and traction, then increase your pressure when you're back on smooth roads, sound great. Maybe you can set it to automatically increase your tire pressure based on GPS data, or the faster you go, the higher the pressure your tires are, or something like that. But certainly the technology is a long way from being ready for the mass market, if it ever gets to that stage. There's gonna be a weight penalty for sure, the complexity of adding to your wheels and bikes, and it could take years to prove reliability and durability. And then there's a cost. Like any new groundbreaking technology, it's going to be expensive when it is first launched. But I support this innovation and trying new ideas, whether they work or not. And it's also the risk the UCI might come along with a rule book and just ban it anyway. Is jet washing your bike ever okay? I was at a Tour of Flanders race and sportive over the weekend, and because the conditions were wet and muddy, the team mechanics were kept busy. And I mean, really busy. I watched several teams wash their bikes and what they all had in common was jet washing their bikes. The reason the pro mechanics use a jet wash is simply because they have lots of bikes and wheels to get through on a daily basis. So you have to be quick and efficient and jet washing is definitely quick. It's also thorough as well and sure there's no dirt or grit hiding any crevice of the bike. And these are bikes that have been in perfect working condition for the riders to go out training and racing every day. And once they jet wash the bikes, they are thoroughly dried, using air compressors to blast water off the bike and gears once they're done. And these bikes, remember, get a regular servicing of the bearings and new chains well before they wear out too. So if it's good enough for the pros, is it okay for us enthusiast cyclists or best avoided? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. Love to hear your thoughts on this topic as always. Personally, I think it's okay. Provided you spray from a distance and keep the jet moving over the bike, the bearings are probably going to be okay. And the benefit of the jet wash is it dries all the grit and dirt out of the small places it can hide and cause wear. And unlike a bucket and sponge, you're not wiping grit across a frame and potentially scratching the paintwork. And provided you're also regularly checking and replacing chains and bearings on your bike, it's probably going to be just fine. But if you're just jet washing and not doing any other maintenance, it's probably best to be avoided. And how is my 400 pound Cannondale CAD 12 project going, you ask? Well, I'll be giving more detail from behind the scenes in my newsletter, which goes out this week. You can sign up with a link down below in the description. But in short, I've not bought a dud, phew. The bike has had a full service by Jim, and with a few new parts and some TLC, it's up and running. And I'll be collecting it soon and shooting a video, so stay tuned for that. And if you missed the first part of that project, you can watch it right here by clicking the button.